Hi scholars, so today we're completing module one, lesson 16. Before we get into the lesson, we have a quick do now. Draw, to, draw tape diagrams to solve the problem. So let me read the problem to you. Three friends want to share 21 sticks of gum. How many sticks of gum will each friend get? So go ahead and pause now to solve this problem and press play when you've solved and are ready to check your work. If you do not have the materials you need to solve, take advantage as you pause to go get those materials, solve the problem, and then press play when you're ready and you've already solved. So again, pause now, solve this problem, and then press play when you're ready. All right, so let's get into it. You sh first thing we should do is draw our tape diagram because it asks us to draw a tape diagram to solve. And I know that in total there are 21 sticks of gum. So in this specific problem, there are three friends and I'm trying to figure out how much gum each friend will get. So I know how many groups there are. I don't know how much is going into each group. There are three friends, one, two, three. And I need to figure out how much sticks of gum they're each gonna get. What's the group size of my group going to be? So I'm going to keep adding sticks of gum to each friend until I get to 21. Six of them until I use them all up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. So I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven sticks of gum in each box. So each friend gets seven sticks. So let's look at our learning tension for today. Thoughtful mathematicians use the distributive property to solve multiplication equations. So let's refresh our memory. The distributive property says is when one of the factors of a pro product is a sum. Multiplying the add end before adding does not change the product. So what that means is I can break apart one of the factors or decompose them to be smaller numbers that are easier for me to multiply. So in this case, in this diagram that we have here, they've broken apart the 7 to be 5 and 2. Because I know my 5 times tables, and counting by 2s is very easy. So I can do 5 times 4, and that gives me 20 here. And then 4 times 2, and that gives me 8. And then I add them together, and I get my product of 28. So I'm able to break apart one of the numbers, only one, I don't do both, to be able to make it easier to solve. So let's go ahead and try that. Here, I'm solving eight times four. So it says to label the array, then fill in the blanks below to make true number sentences. So they've broken apart the eight to be five plus something else. I know this because the four stays the same. So you have five times four and something times four. So they haven't broken apart the four. Here I have five times four, it tells me here. And if I wasn't sure, I can count the rows, one, two, three, four, five, and I have one, two, three, four columns, that's five times four. So let me try here, I have three, so that means this is three times four, one, two, three, four. So they've broken apart the eight to be five plus three. So now I can solve these two separate parts and then add them together. So five times four, I know it's 20 because 5, 10, 15, 20, count by fives. And 3 times 4, I know it's 12 because that's a fact that I've seen a lot on reflex. So I'm going to fill in this information up here. We already know this is 3 because we filled in the same information down here. And I said before I'm going to add the two products, so 20 plus 12. If I add those two up, let me do that right here just to be safe. I get two plus zero is two, one plus two is three. So I know it's 32. Eight times four is 32. So to recap, we, or well, the 
we're going to get an array that's been broken apart for us, and we're using that information to help us solve. So instead of solving 8 times 4, I can do 5 times 4 first, then 3 times 4, and then add the two products that I get. So let's try one together. So here I have 6 times 4. They've broken apart the 6 to be 5 groups of 4. And then here I only see 1 group, 1 group of 4. So they've already solved 5 times 4 for us. It's 20. 1 times 4 would be what? It would be 4. So I'm going to fill in the same information here, 1 times 4. And we know that 20 is the 5 times 4, and we just found out that this is 4. So let's use that information to figure out what 6 times 4 would equal. Twenty-four. So six times four is twenty-four. Now, if you're having trouble, you can just count the array all together. You count by four. It's four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four. But this is a strategy you're going to use again in fourth grade, so I do want you to be familiar with it. But again, if this is very difficult you're not enjoying the strategy, you can skip count, you can draw an array, you can um, do repeated addition. All the strategies we've been learning equal groups. Those aren't, doesn't mean that you have to use this strategy, I just want you to be familiar with it. So let's try this last one. So go ahead and solve this. Press pause now, and then press play when you're ready to check your work. So you're going to go ahead and just write the answers. You don't have to draw this out. You can just write down your what your blanks would be, and then you can check to see if you filled in the blanks correctly. Again, you can just fill in the blanks. You don't have to copy this whole thing and draw out the array for yourself. And if you haven't already, press pause, and then press play when you're ready to check your work. All right, so here we have 5 times 4. We know this because it says so right here, and then we know this bottom part is 4 times 4. So very clearly, I want to point out this 5 and this 4 add up to the 9. So they've broken apart the 9 to make it easier to multiply. Because I may not know my 9 times tables, but I do know my 5s, or maybe I know my 4s. So 5 times 4, we already heard in the previous parts of this lesson, is 20. Now 4 times 4, well, if 4 times 3 is 12, I can just add another group of 4 to that. So 12 plus 4 13, 14, 15, 16, so I get 16, and now I can add these up. But let me fill in these blanks here. So 9 times 4 is the same thing as 5 times 4, that's the first part they gave us. And the second expression they gave us, breaking apart the 9, is 4 times 4. So when I add these up, let's go ahead and do that, 20 plus 16, when I add the products, 6 plus 0 is 6, 2 plus 1 is 3, so that means that 9 times 4 is 36. I can, I, I can always check my work using my array, so I can skip count by 4s, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36 so we are correct thank you so much for watching and like i said if the distributive property is not a strategy that you particularly like does not mean that you cannot use other strategies it's just a strategy that i want you to become familiar with because you will be using this again in fourth grade thanks everyone